Hello everybody! In this video we will discuss about MOSFETs. We have already explained how bipolar junction transistors or BJTs work in a previous video and while MOSFETs are also transistors, the way that they operate is different. Bipolar transistors are current controlled devices while MOSFETs are voltage controlled devices and by varying the voltage on one terminal, you will change the resistance between the other two terminals. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Right now, they might seem random words put together, but soon they will make sense. Seeing the cross-section of a MOSFET will help us understand how they are built and how they work. For this example, we will use an N-MOSFET which has a positive doped substrate in which there are two heavily negative doped regions. These are called source and drain. On top of the substrate, an oxide which acts as an insulator is placed. Then on top of that, a metal layer is placed and this is creating the gate structure. You can now see where the metal oxide semiconductor comes from in a MOSFET. As mentioned before, MOSFETs are voltage control devices and this is where the FET term comes from as the voltage on the gate is creating a field effect. When no voltage is applied on the gate, the MOSFET is operating in the cutoff region. The drain and the source are forming two p-n junctions with the substrate which are creating two depletion regions as for a regular diode. If the voltage in the gate is increased, it will repel the holes in the substrate along the terminal length between the source and drain, in this way creating a channel between the drain and the source where only the negative fixed charge carriers are left, creating a depletion region across the entire channel. Additionally, to this depletion region, a number of electrons from the source start migrating towards the drain as the voltage between gate and source increases. Until this voltage does not exceed the threshold voltage, charge carriers are not connecting all the way towards the drain and the transistor is operating in saturation region. If the voltage continues to increase, it increases the electric field, which attracts more electrons from the source and finally creating the connection between source and drain. Now, if a voltage is applied between the source and drain, the current will flow and the MOSFET is operating in the linear or triad region. This is how the field effect at the gate of a metal oxide semiconductor structure can be used to build a switch that enables or disables current flow. In order to get a PMOS device, you have to create a positive channel, thus having an N-type substrate and heavily P-doped elements for source and drain. Having this, you will have to supply a negative voltage between gate and source in order to make the connection between the drain and source because the current carriers are holes instead of electrons. What we discussed about until now was an enhancement mode device called like that because increasing the gate voltage enhances the conductivity of the channel unlike other MOSFETs that are designed to naturally have a conductive channel and a negative voltage is needed to actively turn them off. In depletion mode, the transistor requires the gate source voltage to switch the device off. The depletion mode MOSFET is equivalent to a normally closed switch. In enhancement mode, the transistor requires a gate source voltage to switch the device on. The enhancement mode MOSFET is equivalent to a normally open switch. Now you know the basic concept behind the MOSFET and how one works. Thank you for staying until now and don't forget to subscribe, like and share because it helps a lot. See you next time.